פלאים של הסיפור, כמו שתי מילים להתחבר. בחוץ האף של משורר, אני מכאן, אני שייך, וכל חבר שלי כמו אח. אתה פועם את בלבבי, אני מזרח מערב. Good evening, everyone. My name is Evelyn Margolin, and I am delighted to welcome you to the wonderful program which we have planned for Tu Bishvat. I am a proud member of the Women for Israel Sapphire Society and a member of the Ohio Valley JNF Board. Along with Alana Gerson-Levy, whom you will meet a bit later in the program, I am also the co-chair of the Ohio Valley WFI Committee. Although the time that we have spent in 2020 And now in 2021, dealing with the global pandemic seems, on a personal level, to have been interminable. It is amazing how, in a relatively short period of time, Jewish National Fund has been able to pivot in order to bring continued support to our family in Israel. Without missing a beat, JNF added new initiatives, responding directly to the unique requirements of COVID. providing laptops to special needs children for remote learning, chartering a plane to bring Alexander Musk students back to the United States, expanding the online marketplace as a means for Israeli artisans to sell their products, and providing JNF virtual tours as a way to provide continued income to Israeli guides. These new initiatives took place while continuing all of the initiatives underway in the areas of Zionist advocacy and education, community building, heritage sites, forestry and green initiatives, water solutions, disabilities and special needs, and research and development. This was possible because of all of you. We are indeed the doers. Tonight's program also reflects how we have pivoted in order to respond to our current reality while still maintaining our unique vision. For the past three years, the Tu Bishvat Seder has been one of the highlights of the Women's Jewish Calendar Year in Cincinnati, Ohio. This event brings women from all segments of the Cincinnati Jewish community together in order to celebrate the holiday and to learn more about Jewish National Fund. This evening, we will not be able to gather together in person to share a fabulous meal and conduct the Seder. However, we have the opportunity to bring the Seder to all of you virtually and to share it with the national WFI community. Our keynote speaker tonight has come all the way from Israel. It is my privilege to introduce you to a woman who has played an instrumental role in fulfilling Jewish National Fund's vision for the land and people of Israel for more than 28 years. She is a dedicated Zionist who served admirably in the IDF. Her professional life continues the legacy of her family, people who made Aliyah to Israel from all over the world. She is an energetic leader who has been dedicated to building Israel since founding a new community in the Galilee, and now oversees JNF's task forces on water solutions and cutting edge development in the Arabah. And she is an insightful emissary who helps connect the American Jewish community, the Israeli people, and the KKL and JNF operations. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Please welcome Jewish National Fund's Chief Israel Emissary, Talia Tsur Avner. Thank you, Evie, for the lovely introduction and welcome JNF Women's for Israel in your special program, Tu uh, Bishvat Seder. It's an honor to be here with you today and thank you for inviting me. So I'm happy to share with you some of the great uh, um, deeds of the Jewish National Fund through the years. But before that, let's wish uh, Jewish National Fund happy birthday. This January, Jewish National Fund is celebrating its 120th anniversary. It was established, yes, 120th, 20 years ago in Basel, Switzerland, in this casino hall that you're just seeing now, with Theodore Herzl, the president of the Zionist Congress, speaking to the Zionist delegates and deciding to establish an organization that will deal with the land for the people in Israel in Eretz Israel. So back then, or if I'll ask you even today, what do you know the Jewish National Fund for? I'm sure 100% of the people who are listening, of the audience here and everywhere, will tell me immediately, we know the Jewish National Fund for trees. You're the tree planter in Israel, and this is the Tu Bishvat season, this is the planting season in Israel. Yes, we did plant trees. We planted over 250 million trees throughout Israel. They cover about 5% of the land of Israel. And in Europe, for example, where they have natural forests, they have 8, 9% of the land covered with trees. All the trees in Israel were planted by men. All the trees were planted by Jewish National Fund. A huge impact on the environment of Israel. A huge beautification of the land of Israel. Yet, Jewish National Fund is not just trees. It's so much more above it. Jewish National Fund is a Zionist organization that was established in order to purchase land in Israel and to enable the Jewish people to make aliyah, to come to their homeland and to, to reside in the land of Israel. That was the focus and that is still the focus today. In Israel today, we have about 9 million people who live mostly in the triangle between Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, and Haifa. 80% of the population live in this triangle between Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, and Haifa. And only 20% live in the rest of the country, meaning the southern part of the country, the Negev Desert, and up in the Galilee. Upper Galilee, Lower Galilee, Golan Heights, you name it. Only 20% of the people live in these areas. So JNF, JNF's vision talks about the future of the land of Israel, the future of our generations in Israel. In order to develop these areas so that 500,000 people will move to the southern part of Israel, to the Negev Desert, and about 300,000 people will move and reside in the Galilee. So, you know, young families today, they don't leave Tel Aviv area or the central area of Israel just in order to live somewhere else in the country. They're gonna check anything that they can, the housing, the job opportunities, the education, the quality of life. And that's exactly what the JNF put as a vision for, for itself, for the next generations to come, to improve the quality of life, to improve the life of those who are already living in these areas and to attract new families, young families, to move to the periphery in Israel. So when you hear uh, that the Jewish National Fund has either planted a forest or built a park or built a medical center or an aquatic center, or a Jewish National Fund is helping with, the, for, with people with special needs and building facilities for them, or Jewish National Fund building another R&D or helping supporting the R&Ds in Israel. These will all come together as one spectrum of improving the life and strengthening the lives of those who live in the southern and northern part of Israel so that many more families will come and reside over there. And that brings me to water. Because after oxygen, 
The next com commodity that nobody can live without is water. And when we speak about water, we speak about environment, we speak about food, we speak about irrigation, we speak about many aspects that are involved in this term. And in terms of water, Jewish National Fund from its day of you know, uh, establishment was involved in uh, building the infrastructure for water in, all around Israel because that was something that was missing. So that we will understand why water is so important and why it is so meaningful that Israel has become a role model for water management around the world. And why is it so important that Jewish National Fund is playing a major role in the water economy of Israel? Let's just take a quick look of what's going on around the world. In the 20th century, the world's population has tripled, but the demand for water grew by six times. You know why? Because the quality of life has arisen. Er, er, and when you purchase more, and when you need more, and when you travel more, and when you eat more, and when you do anything more, you need more water because you cannot produce or consume anything without water. That means that the world is going to need more water because the world's population is going to grow and become 10 billion people. And that means that the the, the, the demand for water will even be higher. And when we look, even in the United States, within 10 years, 40 out of the 50 states in the United States will experience some kind of water shortages, some kind of water issues. issues. Within 15 years, 60% of the world will face water shortage. What will it result? It will result political instability, mass migration, and rising of food prices. That's why the entire world, not only Israel and not only JNF within the state of Israel, need to think today of tomorrow, of the demand, because there is no life without water. And one more important thing to understand when we speak about water, you know, as much as we will ask our kids or grandchildren to save water when they take a shower, that's not gonna be the solution. Because on average, most of the world uh, is using water for agriculture. And agriculture requires sometimes 65% of the water consumption and sometimes even 95%. So when we speak about saving water or where to uh, work on advancing the use of water, that will be in the field of agriculture. So I'm just reminding ourselves, I'm going back to my Israel and our Israel, and I'm reminding us that Israel is located in a wonderful neighborhood, surrounded, luckily we have two countries with uh, uh, peace, uh, Egypt and Jordan, but the rest is not so friendly. We all suffer from the same climate problems, from the same shortages of water, but Israel is the only country that found solutions and still working on future solutions for the water scarcity. For example, Jordan to our east, the, the, the state of Jordan has water in their faucets only once a week. Israel has as much water as we want. People can use as much water as they want. We have a quota. We pay a lot for the production of the water and the saving of the water, yet, our neighborhood does not have the pre has maybe the privilege of having Israel as the only country with the solutions, and they know that if the day come, it will be Israel to support them, and already in some cases support uh, uh, countries around Israel. So I like to quote uh, uh, the former former ambassador, Israeli ambassador to the UN, Ron Prosor, who said, many, many countries may not support us, but the world is thirsty for our knowledge. On one hand, there's a market for bias against Israel. On the other hand, there's also a demand for Israeli know-how, and we have the supply. So let's see. What's the Israeli roadmap in terms of water? In 1948, when Israel was established, we had about 
600,000 people live over there. And the British mandate who controlled the country or the, the land of Israel said, you cannot bring more than 1 million people to the land of Israel because there's no water. Today, Israel supplies water to 12 million people, 9 million people in Israel and 3 million people in the uh, Jordan, in the Hashemite kingdom of Jordan and the Palestinian Authority. And that with less 50% precipitation than what we had in 1948. What did we do? First of all, smart governance. It was announced and decided by the Ben Gurion, first prime minister of Israel and his government, that water is a national asset. And what, uh, the country owns the water and not, nobody can pump, treat, use water without control. Then advancing the technology of how to use the water, and we're going to speak about it in a second. Education. We sing from the kindergarten, Geshem, Geshem, Bo, rain, rain, please come. Not rain, rain, go away. We bless the rain. We appreciate the rain. There are commercials in the Israeli TV speaking of how to save water, and there's no one child in any family who won't stand behind his parents uh, washing the dishes in the sink uh, and closing it when, when, when they finish it. They are watching us. The education is the main component on making the public aware of the water scarcity and the use of the water. Yet, I'm reminding you, we said, you know, most of the water go for agriculture. So even though we're saving with the sink and the shower, that's not enough. What Israel realized about 15 to 20 years ago when we started, you know, every year or every decade, Israel absorbed about 1 million people, 1 million olim, 1 million new immigrants who came to Israel. That's a huge growth. You need to be ready for that. So more, we need more water. We need more food. Israel will always have to be self-sufficient in terms of food of water. How do we do that? How do we get more wet water when there's less precipitation? Let's use the wastewater and recycle it. And when you recycle the wastewater, you turn it into good water for agriculture, and agriculture means food. To cut a very long story short, Israel today recycles about 85% of its sewage and turns it into excellent water for agriculture. Israel is number one in the world in recycling, 85%, as I said, and all of this wastewater, recycled wastewater, is treated and stored in the water reservoirs that the Jewish National Fund built and installed throughout the country, in the south, in the center, in the north, all over Israel for farmers so that they can use the water whenever they don't have enough water. Israel is a leader in recycling, and after Israel comes Spain with 17%, and in the United States, even less than 5% of the wastewater is recycled. And remember, I told you, Jewish National Fund is very active in environment as well. It's not only water, because when you treat the water, you also protect the land, protect the soil, protect the environment. And let's just, you know, a quick uh, virtual uh, visit to some of the reservoirs in Israel. This one is located in the Lower Galilee. This one, it's a complex of three reservoirs located in the Negev. You know that there are no more orange groves in Jaffa. They were all moved to the desert and they're all watered with recycled water that are is stored in the uh, built reservoirs of the Jewish National Fund. This one is in the Besor by, or by the Besor River. <clears throat> this one is in the Lower Galilee, Mount Tabor, and so on and so forth. 250, and there's a request for another 80 new reservoirs to be built by JNF throughout the country. So 60% of the drinking water come from the desalination plants, and more than 50% of the water, the recycled water, is used for agriculture and is stored in Jewish National Fund reservoirs. This slide is very important not only to understand the future of Israel and our part in the future of Israel as, you know, people who live in the United States, but also 
to understand why it is important for Jewish National Fund to plan today for tomorrow. The population growth, according to the forecast, will grow from 9 million people in 2021, the beginning of 2021, to almost 16 million people by 2050. Guys, for that, we need to prepare not only the roads, not only the neighborhoods, the education, the kindergartens, the water, the agriculture, the food supply, everything you need to think today of what is going to happen 30 years from now. And that is a forecast that it forces the State of Israel and Jewish National Fund as an organization that has been always involved in developing the life of Israel to think forward what we need for tomorrow. So all in all, due to the work of Jewish National Fund, we added about 15% of Israel's water economy and Israel's water consumption. By what? by building 250 water reservoirs all over Israel and by increasing uh, uh, these uh, uh, reservoirs by even 90 more through the years. Rehabilitation and restoration of rivers. I don't know how many of you have been to, let's say, for example, the Beersheba River Park and River Bad. That was in a terrible position 20 years ago. It was the garbage site, site of the southern part of uh, Israel. JNF cleaned it renovated it, uh, developed it. That is also very important because by cleaning and re restore restoring rivers, you protect the aquifer. There's always a water underground, under the ground. And if the, the river, the dry riverbed is contaminated, it will affect eventually the aquifer, which is a saving account of water for any, any country. So I said, water is water. Water is an environment. Uh, we built throughout Israel treat, uh, wastewater treatment plants for small communities, such as in the Arava, in Chalutza, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We helped with drilling in the north, in Shamir. We helped ten years ago. We helped in drilling 1.5 miles under the ground. Usually, you don't. They drill more than, I don't know, well, like a few meters, a few feet under the ground. 1.5 miles under the ground, we reached ancient water of 50,000 years that exist over there under the ground. And in the last six years, when the farmers in the northern part of Israel suffered tremendously from a severe uh, drought, this water saved them. The water that JNF has helped drilling and reaching and pumping and supplying to the farmers. Um, education for young generation, I spoke about it. We built uh, rain harvesting uh, water systems to educate kids in elementary schools, in over 90 elementary schools with over 70,000 or 80,000 uh, kids throughout the country, learning how to save the water from the rain and use it in their bathrooms and in their gardening of the schools. And of course, we've been always been supportive to R&Ds in Israel because you cannot be a farmer and you cannot grow anything in the, in the Negev, in the Arava, in Chalutza or in the north without the research and development that will tell you exactly what crops, how much water, how often, what minerals, so that you will have a better yield with less water. So R&D is a key factor for the success of any farmer in Israel. Again, just a virtual uh, uh, visit to the Beersheba River and Lake. Look at the blue water. This is recycled water from the city of Beersheba. And this park was built by the Jewish National Fund for the last decade. Gorgeous, gorgeous park. Definitely when you're next in Israel, go and visit the park another reservoir within the Lahab forest in the south, and those kids that we spoke about collecting water, you know, recycled water from the water tanks. You can see over here the, the purple a pipe. This symbolizes that it is a, a, a recycled water and not fresh water and not drinking water and see how they collect it and go water their gardens. Summary. Water scarcity, not only that it is not over, it's going to get worse because the world is going to get drier and because the population will constantly grow in Israel and around the world. 
the Kinneret, our little sea in the back, you know, over there in the north, is shrinking because there's less precipitation, less flow in into the Kinneret, less flow out from the Kinneret. That's why the Dead Sea is also getting drier and drier. And we always have to keep the Kinneret as our main safety account of water in case, God forbid, something happens to other sources of water, such as the desalination plants. We uh, are, uh, most of Israel is connected to the national grid, but there are areas like the Arava that is still not connected and we need to make sure that they have sufficient water. Population is growing. Located in the Middle East, Israel is surrounded by Arab countries. Some of them are friendly, some of them are less friendly to say the least. We will always have to be self-sufficient in terms of water and food supply. Today, we need to plan Jewish National Fund for our kids, for the next generations to come. Where do they live? Educate, their connection to the country, the facilities that they have, the, the quality of the life that they have so that they will live and flourish and, and develop the land in the state of Israel. You know, I'm the chief Israel emissary. I have two hats. I'm working for JNF for so many years. I invite you to join one of the task forces that I'm running, uh, which is the water task force. And I repeat myself, water is not only water. Water is the environment. Water is an excellent opportunity to change the conversation about Israel rather than speaking about the conflict. Let's speak about you know what good things Israel brings to this world, not only to Israel, to the surrounding area. And water is a tikkun olam. In the last, I would say, five years, uh, I've been running when times were normal, um, uh, missions, water missions to Israel for eight days to, you know, to see and hear water speakers and figures and uh, industry and fields and farmers throughout Israel, really water from A to Z. This year, because of the COVID, because of the COVID, we're running a virtual mission, virtual water mission to Israel. We're going to run three uh, uh, identical missions. The first one just finished last day week. The second one is going to take place in February and the next one in March. Only four days, two hours a day from 12 to 2 Eastern time. And you're going to get the best of the best of information about Israel successes and Israel as a role model uh, for the world in the field of water. I welcome each and every one of you uh, to the Jewish National Fund family. Of course, if you're interested in, more, in water, I'm happy to discuss it further with you. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in Israel, whether it's with a mission or at the national conference, showing you around and, you know, sharing with you the pride of what we've done in Israel. Or as pre late pri uh, president of Israel, Shimon Peres said, we're cultivating fish without water, veggies without soil, and lettuce without roots. We take salt out of the sea and sand out of the, out of the desert. This is us. This is Israel. Thank you. Happy to be Shvat. And good luck to all of you. Good evening, JNF women across the country. Thank you, Talia, for what was a wonderful water conservation presentation. We learned so much. My name is Alana Gerson Levy. I am the Ohio Valley WFI co chair and high society donor and a third generation supporter of Jewish National Fund. Over the years, JNF has grown and evolved with the needs of Israel. If I were to look back at how each generation has supported the growth and development of Israel and the people living there, it might look a little something like this. My grandmother planted trees and bought eight dunams of land. That's roughly two acres in 1946. Her generation's responsibility was to support the Zionistic dream. My mother's generation built communities and invested in people like the Sterot Indoor Playground. My generation's responsibility is to expand on these ambitions by building communities in Israel's periphery, like the Negev in the South and the Galilee in the North, creating infrastructure for ecology, special needs, and heritage preservation. 
and connecting my generation and future generations to Israel. Many of you on this webinar know about JNF's $1 billion roadmap. But for those new to the Women of Israel community, we are now six and a half years into JNF's strategic plan and have raised more than $700 million. Of that amount, a good chunk is from us women. Kola kavod. Even though we cannot see each other tonight, just know that you are among many women who understand the importance of their continued financial investment in the strategic work of Jewish National Fund. I want to take this opportunity to thank you and encourage you, if you can, to further your annual giving. I understand that times are different and for many, difficult. But please join me in furthering your connection to a country that in only 70 years, with the help of Jewish National Fund, has made a dream a reality. If you can make this donation now, please do so by going to the link on your screen or connect with your local JNF professional to make a pledge or for information on sending a check. Your support is critical during this pandemic, which has greatly hurt the Israeli economy. And now, in honor of Tu Bishvat, it is a great time to show your unwavering support of Israel. From generation to future generations, Lador Vador. And now, I am happy to introduce to you, to your event co-chairs, Jan Armstrong Cobb and Gail Silver. Thank you, Alana. This is our third year using this Hakata for the Ohio Valley Region's annual Tu Bishvat celebration. And we're delighted to have this chance to share it with our fellow Women for Israel Society members around the country. I'm the creator of Tu B'Shvat Seder for the Soul, along with Cindy Loon, my co-creator. I know many of you have your Seder plate in front of you. Red and white wine's ready. But as we'll see, there's more to this beautiful holiday and I know everyone will enjoy following along. Before we start, it's my pleasure to introduce my friend and event co-chair, Jen Armstrong Cobb. Thank you, Gail. We are delighted to have an outstanding leader for our Seder tonight. Rabbi Karen Tomashow has been Associate Rabbi of Isaac M. Wise Temple in Cincinnati since 2013. Before that, Rabbi Tomashow served as Associate Rabbi at Holy Blossom Temple in Toronto, Canada. Rabbi Tomashow earned her rabbinic ordination at Hebrew Union College, Jewish Institute of Religion in 2007, where she wrote her thesis entitled, A Lily and an Apple, A History of Jewish Interpretation to the Song of Songs. Rabbi Tomashow also serves as the rabbinic co-chair of the Reform Movement's Brit Milah Board of North America, and she is the president of the Greater Cincinnati Board of Rabbis. Take it away, Rabbi Tomashow. Good evening. This coming Shabbat is known on the Jewish calendar to be Shabbat Shira, or the Shabbat of song. Which song does the Sabbath title reference? Shira Tayam, the song of the sea. That makes this coming Sabbath the Shabbat of water. The portion of Torah we will read on this Shabbat Shira makes not one, not two, but three mentions of water, from the parting of the Sea of Reeds to the sweetening of the bitter waters at the place we know as Mara, to a rock giving forth water because of God's will and Moses's doing. When we stop to think about it, we would recognize that the situation for those in the Bible vis-a-vis -vis water is not much different from our own experience today. While not all of our water is splitting, bitter, or coming out of a rock, we have just been reminded that the world's water quality and quantity is scarce and compromised in significant ways. Tubi Shvat is a day that many of us might call the new year of trees. And it does have its root in the book of Jewish literature and law from the first centuries of this common era in the book known as Mishnah. There we learn of four new years and the new year for trees is certainly one of them. 
However, Tu Bi Shvat is quite literally a date, the 15th of the month of Shvat. Just as in many other countries and religious traditions, there are signs or symbols associated with each Hebrew month. Did you know that Shvat's symbol is drawing a bucket of water from a well? Perhaps this is because trees and our environmental life need it to grow. Or perhaps it is related to a lesson from the Hasidic master, Rabbi Tzvi Elimelech Spira, who smartly observes that a bucket of water is something that only a human can use. The act of drawing water is to ready ourselves to serve the environment. Finally, water is also a metaphor in the Jewish tradition a metaphor for the depth of Torah and Talmud. And that brings us back to this week's Torah's theme of water. It is religious ethics and laws that remind us that we all have an obligation to nourish and cultivate the earth. Tu Bishvat is a minor holiday with a major message. We are to appreciate the fruit of the earth we are to get to know the species of the earth, and we are to see ourselves as responsible for the health of water. Jewish National Fund is leading the way in Israel, and may we all follow suit. We now continue with the four steps of our Seder. The first step is Asiyah. Asiyah means action, creation of our physical world according to the Kabbalah began when the vessels containing all of God's light were shattered into countless shards, sparks of the divine. The job of repairing a broken world became ours, possible only through an effort to search out these sparks, thereby moving closer to the divine and tikkun olam, repairing the world. Our first cup of wine is white symbolizing winter just as it begins its transition to spring. The first fruit we eat has a hard and protective shell, keeping safe the edible fruit inside and representing the promise and potential of that which is hidden. Now we take the wine and the pomegranate seeds and offer our blessings. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, borei peri hagafen. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of all, who creates the fruit of the vine. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, borei peri haet. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of all, who creates the fruit of the tree. And now we offer our blessing of gratitude for reaching this season. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Shehechianu V'Kiyamanu, V'Higianu Lazman Hazeh. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, sovereign of all, for giving us life, for sustaining us, and for enabling us to reach this season. As we reflect on the theme of action, I pose the following questions for your contemplation. Whose job is it to repair the world? Have you thought deeply about what you might do? And now we continue with the second step of our Seder, Yitzira, meaning formation. We move from purely physical creation to the notion of human creativity and imagination. For example, we can envision and form raw clay into a pot or a pitcher. Water is often associated with Yitzira. It too forms the physical world, 
from the life in the womb to earth's rivers, seas, and oceans. For our second cup of wine, we mix a small amount of red wine into the white, symbolizing the changing landscape as the sun warms the earth and the first flowers appear. The next fruits we eat are soft on the outside, accessible yet firm at their core. Their inner pits symbolize the seeds of strength within all and all of creation, the promise to grow and flourish. We now offer our blessings. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Peri Hagafen. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, sovereign of all, creator of the fruit of the vine. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Peri Haetz. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, sovereign of all, creator of the fruit of the tree. We now ask that you respond to the following question by participating in the chat. What resolution might you make to help deepen your relationship with the natural world? First, here are some ideas, and then I encourage you to add your own in the chat. Reduce water usage. Buy, use, and recycle plastics more conscientiously. Eat local and or vegetarian for a week or two. Change your light bulbs to LEDs. Again, please feel free to commit to one of those and or to add your own in the chat. We continue now with the third step of the Seder, Bri'ah, meaning creation. We are given the ability, the obligation, according to Jewish teaching, to participate in building a better world. Our third cup of wine is mostly red, symbolizing the flourishing of spring. Our next fruit is fully edible, even the seeds, symbolizing creation in full bloom. We offer the following blessings. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Peri Hagafen. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, sovereign of all, creator of the fruit of the vine. And Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Bore peri ha eights. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, sovereign of all, creator of the fruit of the tree. I'd like to offer a tree meditation with poses and encourage you to try this out, even if it might not be something you anticipate being comfortable with. As you sit or stand, Try to embody the spirit of a tree. Your feet are planted like roots. Your core is strong like the trunk. Raise your hands above the crown of your head and cup them like a basin. Think of yourself like a tree growing upwards. Allow yourself to relax. You can even sway in the wind like a tree. This pose represents the heavens. Next, lower your hands so that they are eye level, keeping them cupped. Lower your gaze so that your eyes are almost closed. 
Imagine you are illuminated from within. This pose represents the earth. Finally, lower your hands to your chest level. This pose connects you to humanity. Hold this final pose for a few moments. When finished, lower your arms and embrace yourself by crossing your arms over your chest to conclude the tree meditation. Thank you for trying that. We conclude now with our fourth and final step, Atsilut, meaning emanation. It is the highest level of being, the world of pure spirit according to Kabbalah. Atsilut is associated with fire, the divine spark of God that is never entirely accessible to human experience or comprehension. Our fourth cup of wine is red, symbolizing the fully formed season. We are mindful too of the coming winter. Skin covers our final fruit, Fragrance greets us as we peel it back. Fragrance is the purest of the five senses, the one sense through which we cannot sin. It was into mankind's nostrils that God breathed the breath of life. We now offer the blessings, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Peri HaGafen. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of all, creator of the fruit of the vine. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Peri HaEitz. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of all, creator of the fruit of the tree. As we prepare to conclude the ritual portion of our Seder and our evening, I would like to wish each of you health from this to Bishvat to next to Bishvat. I'd also wish for you participation in our environment, wish for you choosing what is meaningful for you in your relationship with our earth. And finally, spiritual meditation and holiness as we go forth at this time and fill up our buckets of water. Thank you, Rabbi Tamasha, for leading this inspiring and meaningful celebration of Tu Bishvat. I also want to thank my Women for Israel co-chair, Evie Margolin, the event co-chairs Jan Armstrong Cobb and Gail Silver, and to our Seder participants, Barbara Burry, Marty Bettigold, Barbara Miller, and Nina Paul. Thank you all for being part of Women for Israel Society. Please consider increasing or renewing your donation today. Finally, please join us for other fun virtual events. A full list is available online at jnf.org slash on demand. And keep an eye in your email inbox for the Women for Israel newsletter. Thanks again and see you soon. Shirin shana ba lechoni, ani no se'am